It's so good to be back with you on this evening, and we're just grateful that uh, God has allowed us to be as healthy and strong as we are this time of year. We thank God that it is the Christmas season, the giving season, but I also want you to understand that it is a season of joy, so I want to talk to you about a season of joy, and hopefully uh, we can continue to to, to talk on this wise uh, the rest of this month. Over in Romans, the King James Version, Romans chapter 14, verse 17, says, For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, it's not natural things, but the kingdom of God is righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. And so I need us to understand that in being in the kingdom of God, especially this time of year, we should not be demonstrating uh, only righteousness and peace, but we should be demonstrating joy. Because the joy of the Lord is our strength. We should be in a mindset and an attitude that because I'm saved, because God has kept me, because he's delivered me, this is a time when I can uh, depend on God and just, and just think about all the things that he's done in my life and still doing in my life. And I can come up with the attitude that I have joy. And so we need to adapt an attitude that this is a season of joy. This is a season to be happy. This is a season to appreciate. This is a season to be thankful. This is a season to reflect on all God has done throughout the year. We've made it for 12, just about 12 more months. And, 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 and so the Holy Spirit that lives on the inside of us, he produces something on the inside of us. He produces because he lives there, because he dwells there. The Holy Spirit uh, produces righteousness. The Holy Spirit produces peace. It produces, he produces, because he's a person, he produces joy in our soul, which will manifest throughout our physical body. So as the Holy Spirit on the inside of us, the person of Christ living on the inside of us is, is actually producing joy and if he's doing that then we need to allow him we need to allow the holy ghost to produce joy in our thought life we need to allow the holy ghost to produce joy to produce joy in our emotion it's hard to tell. you know you know people talking about they're happy and they're joyful and and you see no expression you see nothing uh through their body you see no body language you see no expression but when the holy spirit is moving and giving us joy on the inside and joy through our souls, we should see a manifestation through our bodies. We ought to walk different. We ought to talk different. We ought to look different. We ought to have a smile and not a frown. We ought to raise our hands. We ought to be high stepping. We ought to be, you know, glorifying the Lord. We ought to be dapping folk up. We ought to be praising God. We ought to be happy. We ought to be energetic. We ought to be alive. We, we shouldn't be dead but because we understand that there's a God on the inside of us that produces joy and not just because things are going right not just because we are happy uh, about what we have but because the joy of the Lord is our strength and the power of the Holy Ghost is living on the inside of us. The joy of the Lord. I, I like what Nehemiah said in, in, in chapter 8 verse 10. He says the joy of the Lord is my strength. So the reason why I want to have joy, the reason why I want to have an attitude of joy, the reason why I want to make sure that the enemy don't take this joy or the world don't take this joy away from me is because having joy in the Lord gives me strength. And every day I need strength. I know I have to eat and take vitamins and exercise, and that gives me strength. I know I have to lay down and get a certain amount of rest. That gives me strength. I realize that people around me, as I talk with them, and, and, and people around me, as I begin to connect with them, and we encourage one another, I get strength. I get strength, but I need you to understand that when I have joy, the joy unspeakable, when I have joy, Joy in the Lord, that gives me strength. The Bible says the joy of the Lord is my strength. So it doesn't matter what's going on around me as long as I have the joy of the Lord. It's not about what happens in me or to me or around me, but it's about the Holy Ghost that's on the inside of me that produces what I need all the time, every time. And so when you're going through sadness, when you're going through uh, turmoil, when you're going through uh, 
trials and tribulations, you need, to, you need to remind yourself and switch and walk in the spirit as you switch your mind and think about the fact that the joy of the Lord is my strength. So I need to, how, how do you get the joy of the Lord? You, you start thinking about what God has done. You think about what his word says. You think about what the powerful word of God says, what the scripture says. And as you begin to eat this, as you begin to meditate on it, as you begin to quote it, as you begin to speak it out of your mouth, you will see that you will find some joy not only in your soul but it will work out through your body and you'll have joy in your life near myself the joy of the lord the joy of the lord is my strength so i need to make sure that god is first in my life i need to make sure that i'm walking upright i need to make sure that he's ordering my steps i need to make sure that the lord is 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 keeping me i need to make sure that i'm obeying him i need to make sure that i'm following his every footstep that i'm following his every command because as i begin to understand what it is that who he is in me and what it is that he wants me to do he's going to give me joy and as i continue to have joy i'm going to be strong i'm going to be strong in the lord i'm going to be strong in the power of his might i know sometimes particularly this time of year we're thinking about what we got what we're going to get what we're going to give how much money we're going to spend you know sometimes people are glad when christmas Christmas is over so they can get back to their regular life because there's so much pressure. There's so many things going on. There's so many responsibilities. There's so much. And some of us are glad that they just come once a year. But I found out and I understand that it doesn't matter what's going on as far as holidays. What matters is, is that I have joy unspeakable. It, happiness is not going, I'm not going to experience happiness all the time. But I can experience joy in the Lord. And as I continue to walk in joy, I'm going to be strong so whatever come against me I can laugh at it whatever come against me I can still be energized in the Lord and understand that no weapon formed against me is going to prosper because I have joy sometimes 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 we have to remind ourselves when you when you're going through sad times and you're going through missing loved ones and so on and so forth you got, you got to remind yourself that the joy of the Lord is your strength Joy means happiness. Joy means delight. It means delight. And so it brings me to another point over in Psalms 37 verse 4 in the Living Bible. It says, be delighted with the Lord. Be delighted with the Lord. In other words, be happy, be satisfied, be joyful with the Lord. Now, I want to digress here. You know, a lot of times people don't have the right relationship with God through Jesus Christ. So they don't know how to be, they don't know to have, how to have joy in the Lord. Uh, they don't even know what that means. You know, they, 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 they see God as somebody's always judging them, always correcting them. You know, they got to walk a chalk line. They got to walk a straight line. They got to, you know, make sure that they do everything right and perfect. And so they don't have any real relationship with him. So they miss the joy part. And when you miss the joy of the Lord, you also miss, miss his strength. Because it's the joy that gives you strength. How do you get strength out of it? You know, when we say the joy of the Lord is your strength, man, you don't have to worry about nothing. You are empowered. You are not only are you transformed, but you're restored as life. Sometimes in different areas beat you down and you start getting depressed and you start changing your mind about who you are and they feel you feel different about who you are and and and. And why you are here and your purpose and all of this kind of thing. And, and, and so you just kind of get, you start going down and you start going down the wrong road. And you have to understand that the Lord uh, keeps his word. The Lord is faithful to what he called you to. He's going to help you to do what he called you to do. He's going to continue to bless you. He's going to anoint you. He's going to not only call you, but he's going to qualify you. He's going to give you the, the ability to do everything that he called you to do. He's going to give you the ability to have peace. He's going to give you the ability to be excited. He's going to give you the ability to, light, to delight yourself in him. 
Why is it so important to have joy in the Lord? Because the joy of the Lord is your strength? Why is it so important to delight yourself in the Lord? Why is it so important to be happy and excited about what God is doing in your life and doing in the world and doing in the kingdom and doing overall? Why, why, is, it so, it, it, why is that so important? Why is it so important to know who he is and what he's done and that he's creator God and that we live and move and in him we live and move and have our being? Why is it so important according to Psalms 37? 7, 4 in the Living Bible to be delighted with the Lord because it goes on to say, then he will give you all your heart's desire. So if you want to experience the abundant life, you need to be delighted in the Lord. If you want to experience not lacking and, and, and having what you ask God for, that he answers your prayers, that you have your petition, that you, if you make your petition known, that he is able to grant you everything you ask for, then you need to understand that delighting yourself in him will help, will, 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 will cause God and provoke God to give you the desires of your heart. So a joyful heart in the Lord. Watch this, a joyful heart in the Lord provokes God to provide all of your needs, all of your yearnings, all of your aspirations, all of your requests, all of your petitions. So all you got to do is just stay excited in the Lord. What is God going to do today? What has he already done yesterday? What might he do tomorrow? Give him praise. Give him glory. Uh, jump and shout. Praise his name. Understand that, 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 that he gave joy to the world. When Jesus came, he gave joy to the world. And so a joyful heart in the Lord provokes God to provide all your needs, all your yearnings, your aspirations, your, your requests, your petition. And, and so... As we begin to understand that we need to delight ourselves in the Lord, just, just have a, the right attitude and be joyful. Then we go into Proverbs 17, 22, A. Because as you're joyful, having joy does something for you. It does something for your, for your person. It does something for your quality of life. It does something for your character. It does something for your future. It opened doors for you. Having joy puts you in the right position. It helps you, and I keep saying this over and over again, attitude. It helps you to have the right attitude. It helps your faith. Having joy helps you to, to have the right perspective. It helps you to look at things the right way. It helps you to, to see things like God sees them. It helps you to have the spiritual eyes that you need and the spiritual ears that you need and to walk the spirit life, to walk in the spirit. And I like here, it says, uh, so I said, so, so I just said that it, it does something for you personally. So Proverbs 70, 22, A says, a cheerful heart does good like medicine. A cheerful heart. So joy, man, is like, so cheerful, it means joyful, merry, positive. A cheerful, joyful, merry heart. A positive heart does good like medication. Hallelujah. So, so, so joy is good medicine for you. Think about it. You know, we used to hear people say, it takes more muscles to frown than to smile. Okay? We, we, we have to understand that, that joy does good or a cheerful heart, which is being joyful and delightful and merry and positive, does good like a medicine. When we talk about medicine, it does good like a remedy. See, so, so medicine is a remedy for a lot of things. Do you not understand that joy is a remedy for a lot of things? Joy is, is a remedy for, for solutions. Joy, joy is a remedy. Joy, joy is a solution for problems. Joy, joy is a cure for, for problems and issues. Joy, in a lot of instances, is the answer. You, you, you just need to get glad about it. Did, did you not hear one of the writers say, count it all joy when you fall into testing trials and temptations? 
Count it all. To, and he, he, he said instead of, instead of going somewhere high, and he said you got to jump up and shout. When, when things come against you and, 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 and you feel like you can't make it, you need to change your attitude about I know a lot of people, they like to go into sackcloth and ashes. They like to pray. They like to fast. They like to hide. Well, you, you need to change. Why don't you just get happy and glad and understand that if something is coming against me, then maybe God is allowing it so that he can break me. Maybe God is, an allow, is allowing it so that he can cause me to be whole, so that he can he can strengthen my faith muscles so he can strengthen uh, my spirituality so that he can impart some things in me so that he can cause me to step and move and push me to the next level that I need to be on. What about understanding that the joy of the Lord is your strength and count it all joy when things come against you and understand that joy is like a medicine. It's like medication. I got to have my medicine today. And joy, joy, joy helps keep my blood pressure down. Uh-huh. Joy helps me to understand that it's like a medicine. It, 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 it's my solution. It's my cure. It, 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 it answers problems. It's the answer to problems. Joy is therapy, therapy, and treatment. So, so it's like a medicine. Medicine is therapy and treatment. Therapy means rehabilitation and healing. Uh-huh. I want you to listen real carefully. Joy is like a medicine, and medicine is a remedy. Medicine is also therapy. It's like therapy. Rehabilitation and healing. A lot of people have problems and issues in their life, and they have problems walking with God, and they have problems enjoying the kingdom life because... They're up and down. And they're always attaching themselves to negativity. And they're always listening to negativity. And they're always speaking negativity. And it seems like it's something on the inside that always draws them to mess and foolishness and gossip and things that are not of God and things that are not going to matter. They spend most of their time concentrating and reading and studying and practicing things that carry them down the wrong road and all it does is just divide it causes them to be depressed it causes them to make poor decisions it causes them to doubt God it causes them to be weak it causes them uh, to, to say one thing that they love the Lord or they believe God or they have faith in God but they walk out something else and it's simply because they don't understand that the joy of the Lord is your strength. And you need to watch this. You need to protect your joy. Oh, yeah, you got to protect your joy, man. You, you, look, when joy is a therapy, it's good like a medicine. When, it's, when it rehabilitates you, that means you're broken. That means, that means things are all over the place. That means you're in a point in your life where you just don't know if you're going to make it. And there's so much life has been, so much life has been sucked out of you. So much life, you've been damaged. You've been beat. You've been, you've been torn. You've been ripped. All of this stuff is going on. And love and the joy of the Lord comes in and it rehab rehabilitates you. It builds you back up. It transforms you. It revitalates you. It restores you. It gives you strength. It gives you energy. You get your life back. You get your mind set back. You get, you find out that you are, uh, oh my God, you find out that you are who God says you are and you can do what God says you can do and you find out that all you got to do is keep believing God and be happy about it. No matter what come against you, be happy. No matter what come against you, have some joy no matter what they say to you or people do to you you make sure that you laugh about it you make sure you say God has the last word God has the last say so it doesn't matter anymore God has, God has the last say so whatever I need God's going to help me he's going to heal me he's going to deliver me he's going to bring me out he's going to touch me he's going to touch my mind he's going to touch my heart he's going to deliver me he's going to even put folk around me that's going to run my enemies off for me I don't have to worry 
All I got to do is spend some time giving him joy. All I got to do is be happy in the Lord. All I have to do is delight myself. If I want a raise, I need to delight myself in the Lord. If I need more money, you need to delight yourself in the Lord. If you need health and strength and healing in your body, rehabilitation, therapy, whatever you need, delight yourself in the Lord and watch him give you the desires of your heart. Watch him do that. You do things that you never thought would be able to. You be able to be the things that him do things that you didn't think could be done. Watch him touch your enemies and they will bless you. Watch him turn things around for your good. Watch all the stuff that's coming against you will work out for your good. Whew. Just from having joy unspeakable and full of glory. So you got to watch who you're around. You got to watch who you talk to. You got to watch what you say. Hallelujah. Because misery loves company. But I stopped by to tell you that if you have joy in your heart, if you learn how to dance, even in rain, when you learn how. To give God glory in spite of. It, it provokes him. To give you the desires of your heart. So if you want to be blessed. You need to shout a little more. You want to be blessed. You need to clap your hands and praise God a little bit more. If you want the blessings of God. And you want to maintain your joy. You need to learn how to praise him in sad times, in bad times, in difficult times. You need to open your mouth if you can't move your body. You need to open your mouth even if you're in pain. You need to open your mouth even if your mind not thinking right. You need to open your mouth and still say, thank you, Jesus. I love you, Lord. I glorify you. I magnify you. Hallelujah is the highest praise. Uh-oh. My time just ran out. <laughs> God bless you. I want you to remember that you can, if you decide to have a season of joy. God bless you. We'll see you next time.